any or did you have any special block on that field goal that he missed? Well, we were hoping that it, that it would affect him. And, uh, you know, we know that he's uh, an experienced kicker, but, you know, pressure uh, can just about bust anybody's pipe. And we were hoping that that would happen. And, uh, and the end result, it happened for us. It was great. Okay, Vern. Uh, let's go to Vern in Houston. <laughs> All right, I'm here with Terry Bradshaw, where the Cowboys defeated the Houston Oilers today 17-10 in an equally difficult game. This was tied 10-10 until about three minutes to go. The Cowboys went 75 yards and finally got the touchdown, a 31-yard run by Dorsett, set it up, and Danny White threw one yard to Fred Cornwell for the winning TD. But this, Terry, was a story of defense by Dallas. This was a, a game that uh, goes back to years of uh, Steelers and Oilers. It was just an all-out aggressive game, lots of blitzing, lots of sacks, two tall Jones you're going to see here. Coming around the outside on Bruce, Bruce Matthews, number uh, 74, Hegman going inside, and one of the 13 sacks today that the Cowboys registered against Moon and the Houston Oilers. Actually, it's going to be officially at 12 sacks. They had a couple called back, and there was some confusion, but 12 sacks ties an NFL record that the Cowboys share with another couple of clubs, and they also had those 12 sacks for 85 minus yards for the Oilers passing attack. So the Cowboys win it. They keep pace with the Cardinals and the New York Giants at 3-1. and one. They think this might have been a must-win for themselves, and I think you might feel the same way. Well, it was a must-win for the Cowboys, more so than the Oilers, in which the Oilers were saying, hey, this is a game we got to have. Cowboys needed, in my opinion, worse than the Oilers did. Well, the Cowboys got it, but it was a real struggle. Now let's go to Chicago and Tim Ryan. All right, Vern, with Johnny Morris, we saw the Bears score a 45-10 to 10 win here today, just routing Washington, which fell to 1-3, and three, of course, and the Redskins actually led in the game 10 to nothing. but Jim McMahon had another superb afternoon, 13 of 19. He threw for three touchdowns, caught one from Walter Payton, had only one interception. But the turning point came with the Bears trailing 10 nothing early in the second period. Willie Galtz, touchdown return of a kickoff. He takes it just over the goal line. It's a 99-yard return, and Willie, of course, with his great Traxter speed has showed it. Well, you didn't see it there, but we've got Willie live down on the sideline, and he'll tell you what he did. He went 99 yards. Congratulations, Willie. That sure turned the game around. Well, thank you. I praise God for that. What happened? Uh, I knew it. we had to get a big play in the game because we were down 10 to nothing, and, and everything was going toward Washington. I didn't know it would be a kickoff return, but one side caught the ball. I headed toward the middle, and it opened up like the Red Sea. And I'll... Okay. We're going to see it now. Go ahead, Willie. Yeah, it just opened up like the Red Sea right there, and I, I just wanted to take off, and I gave a move to the, the, the kicker there, and I was trying to decide whether or not to try to outrun this guy, but I cut all the way across field and it reminded me of my Tennessee days, and I was glad to be able to do that. I think it sparked the whole team a great deal. Willie, I think that you are now stuck on kickoff return for the rest of the, <laughs> rest of the season. Well, I hope so. I just want to be able to do everything I can to help this team win. We have a good team, and I think we need every, everything we can get. I know, Willie, that uh, you wanted to please the fans here. Uh, the Bears fans are, are tough. They're supportive, but they're tough. And I know you were looking to make a big play here. You must feel good about it. Well, I feel extremely well to be able to run a kickoff back all the way at home. It gives me something special. Of course, my family was here, my wife and friends. And it was just, I just praise God for it. All right, Willie, congratulations to you. The 4-0 Bears go to Tampa next week, and we're going to Brent Musburger in New York. Thank you. All right, Tim, thank you very much. Leonard Marshall, a pretty good audition for a broadcaster. <laughs> you heard that in his ear and way down to Dallas. He went. Herb, uh, the Chicago Bears, they had that very impressive defense. They've never had a real good offense, but now the way they're coming around, they're going to be very dangerous this year. You know, I was out there during the week, earlier this week, Brent, you know, and they very quietly go around talking about how proud they are of their offense. They have a great offense. As a matter of fact, they're number one in the league, I guess, going into the uh, play this weekend. But, um, you know, they feel if they're going to get to the Super Bowl, obviously they have to go through San Francisco. San Francisco's coming up in a couple of weeks. We'll see how good they are. And the Dallas Cowboys, Jimmy, what do you think about them right now? They're a pretty good ball club, definitely a contender, and will be in the playoffs. And we will continue with our post-game show on CBS in just a moment. update a story for you on the west coast we get word that dan fouts the quarterback of the chargers right now is having a knee x-ray he took a shot in that game after leading the chargers into a seven to nothing lead over the cleveland browns only in the first quarter now already the minnesota vikings have won again this afternoon but they had to come back a second time after the bills tied the game at 20 all they won at 27 20 dan deardorff is standing by buffalo so let's go to dan 
Thank you, Brent Musburger. And Gene Fugit, it was a big win today for the Minnesota Vikings. Good comeback. Now they're 3-1 and one with the Rams next, Dan. The Rams are next, and right after the game, we had the opportunity to talk to Tommy Kramer, the quarterback of the Minnesota Vikings. Tommy, once again, uh, a good job of spreading the football around. Three touchdown passes in the first half. All the different people. That's, uh, that must make you feel good when you know you have that many people that can play that big a part in your offense. Well, that's true. You know, anytime, you know, you, don't, you hate to re have to rely on one person all the time. And, uh, you know, now we have Anthony Carter, Leo Lewis, and, uh, you know, Mike Jones, Teddy Brown. All those guys can make Tommy, things Tommy, now happen. what are your thoughts about next week? You've got a big game in Los Angeles against the Rams. Well, we haven't really uh, looked at them at all, but we know they're, they're an excellent defensive football team. But we just, if we go out there and uh, if I can get time to throw the football, I feel that we can have a lot of success against them. Tommy, how many people that you know thought the Vikings could be 3-1 and one by the end of the month of September? Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't think there were any, any other than the people on our football team. But, uh, you know, we knew if we, could have, if we could stay healthy and Bud being back, that uh, we had some talent on this football team, but uh, we had to keep them healthy. Physically, Tommy, you're feeling fine? I'm oh, feeling real good. Okay, congratulations, Tommy. Nice win today. Thank you, Dan. Dan, let me ask you a question. You were around Bud Grant. What's the most significant difference he has brought to the Vikings this year? Well, I guess stability maybe, Brent. He really has come back in and installed the system that was there for so many years before. And, you know, needless to say, the players have responded to it. Uh, Bud is back. That's the slogan that's circulating around Minneapolis, and it certainly is true. They're playing like it. All right, Dan, thank you very much. Now, let's get everybody up to date on all the scores. The early games are all final right now. The Dallas Cowboys win again, 17-10, tough battle against the Houston Oilers. They sack Warren Moon 12 times in that game. The Giants in overtime win 16-10. Elvis Patterson intercepts a Ron Jaworski pass and runs it into the end zone on the Eagles' first series after Philadelphia won the flip going into overtime. The Los Angeles Raiders, three touchdowns by their defense, 35-20 over the New England Patriots in that game, and Rusty Hilger suddenly takes over as the Raider quarterback because of an injury to Mark Wilson. Minnesota beats Buffalo 27-20. We just got that story from Dan Deardorff, and the St. Louis Cardinals win again, and the final in that one was 43-28 over the Green Bay Packers, who did put Lynn Dickey back in at quarterback in the second half of that game. The Kansas City Chiefs run their record to 3-1, 28-7 over the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks sink to 2-2, two and two, and just a few short days ago, they were 2-0. Oh. But the Rams and the Chiefs have beat them now in back-to-back -back games. Another surprise team this year, the Detroit Lions. They break 3-1. and one. They beat the winless Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 30-9 was the final there. And Jim McMahon throws three more touchdown passes, nine for the season to lead the NFC, 45-10 over the Washington Redskins, the final in that game. Now, these games are just underway. The Rams, they are still unbeaten, and they are scoreless with the Falcons in the second quarter in Anaheim. Miami and Denver are deadlocked at seven. This is the first time that Marino and Elway have ever dueled each other. And Cleveland and San Diego, Dan Fouts with a knee injury. We don't know how serious. 7-0, the Chargers lead the Browns in the second quarter. The Jets get field goals early, and they lead the Colts 6-0 there in the first quarter of that game. The Super Bowl champion, San Francisco 49ers, they are in a scoreless duel against the New Orleans Saints. And college football, next Saturday afternoon here on CBS, you'll see either Michigan State against Iowa and Iowa City, or Arizona State taking on UCLA in Los Angeles. That will be live, of course, at 2.30 Eastern Time on CBS. Then on Sunday, these are the regional games we will cover for you. The unbeaten Chicago Bears go down to Tampa Bay to play the winless Buccaneers. The Detroit Lions, one of the surprising teams, go on the road to play Green Bay. The Philadelphia Eagles, who lost a heartbreaker to the Giants in overtime, will play Bum Phillips down in New Orleans. The San Francisco 49ers will play in Atlanta. The Falcons usually play them very tough down in Atlanta. And the Minnesota Vikings will go out to play the Los Angeles Rams. When we first saw the schedule, that didn't look like a big one, but it certainly does now. And, of course, the NFL today will start it all next Sunday at 12.30 Eastern Time. We will take a look at the Rams' great running back, Eric Dickerson. For Jimmy the Greek and Irv Cross, I'm Brett Musburger. We hope you've enjoyed the NFL Today on CBS. So long, everybody. The NFL Today post-game show has been sponsored by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less.